It's 2024, so here are 24 building tips if you are constructing a computer this year. First tip pa lang, makakatipid ka na talaga. And that is, you do not need to buy the latest version. Bagong taon na, so syempre, maririnig mo yung mga brands nagsasabi na, oh, yung ilalabas namin sa 2024, sobrang ganda nito, bulok yung mga linabas namin nung 2023. Huwag kayong maniwala. For a lot of different use cases, kung office rig man yan, editing bay, gaming rig, the hardware released last year, I'm thinking about AMD 5000 series, Intel 13th or 14th gen, a lot of the old hardware is still very good for present use cases. Plus, bumababa na mga presyo nila, further adding to their value for money. Getting the latest hardware is not necessarily the greatest for your build or for your wallet. Tip 2, you'll also save a lot of money if you activate Windows using a CD key from our sponsor. So ka na ba sa unactivated Windows mo? Well, lucky you! Pinakabago mula sa cdkeyoffer.com Windows 10 and Windows 11 activation, activation codes. Code. Legit, safe, at pinakamura. Madali lang umorder. Hanapin ang Windows version na gusto mo. Piliin ang preferred payment method. Wala pang 5 minutes, may CDK ka na para sa Windows mo. Marami na kaming natulungan. Dati, sad and depressed ako. But now, I found a love of my life. Dati, aimless and walang purpose ang life ko. But now, I'm a world-class Zumba instructor. So, web developer ako and content creator for a YouTube channel. And ngayon, ganun pa rin ako, pero activated na yung Windows ko. Kaya ako naghahanap ka ng legit, mura, at original software. Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Check out cdkoffer.com Tip 3, do you need DDR5 in your life? And if you remember tip 1, it was you don't need the latest and the greatest. And that extends to DDR5. While it's nice to have, I certainly wouldn't recommend upgrading just to get DDR5 because that's a cascading list of expenses. Kailangan mo siguro i-upgrade yung motherboard, tapos yung CPU, tapos yung RAM. Sobrang mahal na for the limited performance gain you get from DDR5. Even for new builds, DDR4 is still very good. And you're not leaving much on the table if you opt to go for the older generation. Plus, DDR5 is still not as stable as DDR4. We've done a bunch of new builds in the shop. Upon testing, a few of them were unstable. And when we delved in further, RAM yung problema. So we had to fast around with the timings. It's just not as smooth as the usual setup we're used to with DDR4. If not DDR5 RAM, then what do you need in a new computer? And that's tip number four. Get the right hardware for what you want your computer to do. For a simple office build, you don't need a 3900K. Wag ka maniwala dun sa IT procurement minyo na nagsasabi na kailangan namin yung sobrang bilis para lang maka-excel. Heck, you don't even need a GPU usually for office computers. For an editing rig, I would suggest going long or spending a bit more on the CPU and a little less on the GPU. Usually, editing programs use more of the CPU than the GPU. Baliktad naman for gaming. For gaming, go long, spend more on the GPU, spend less on the CPU because games usually tax the GPU more than the CPU. Getting the right parts for the job will save you a lot of money in the long run. That said, it is possible to build a good mid-range build that is well-suited to a variety of tasks. Tip 5 is mid-range is very versatile without having to be expensive. The key here is decent mid-range. So for motherboards, usually get the step below the top tier. So if we're talking about AM4, that would be the B550 series. And same thing with the CPU. If AM4, something around the 5600 or 5600X would be good. If the budget allows it, get a slightly above average GPU if you're into gaming. Round it out with a 1TB SSD, 16GB of RAM. These are all excellent choices for a mid-range or even a high-end rig. And with that sort of setup, you can do so many things. Gaming, yes, but also streaming, 
video editing, and of course, your basic office work. A mid-range build fits so many needs, and it doesn't have to be super expensive. Mid-range builds are workhorses. They can do a lot more than their owners usually think they're capable of. And for any build regardless of budget, tip six is that not all parts in a brand new rig need to be brand new. Computer parts are so durable that a lot of times you can reuse old parts from your old computers. Specifically, I'm thinking about the PSU, storage, RAM. These are the common suspects for scavenging from an old computer to stick into the new computer. My old PSU before was a Corsair and I think I used that thing in around 3 builds before it finally gave up the ghost. Many PC parts are more durable than we give them credit for and a lot of them will last for a really long time. Take advantage of that and take what you can from the old to save money on your new rig. Scavenging parts from an old rig to use in a new rig is a time-honored PC building tradition. Doesn't matter if it's 2024, whatever year you're in. It's great advice. But it might happen that there is a part that you need that you just don't have from your old rigs. Do you need to buy brand new in that case? Not necessarily. Tip 7 is don't be afraid to buy secondhand PC parts, especially if it's from a trusted source. I know this is weird coming from me because I have a PC shop. I should be the first one to be telling you to buy brand new. But that just isn't the case. Secondhand parts are a great way to get excellent performance at a reduced price. For secondhand parts, usually we made two objections. One, aesthetics, and two, durability. So aesthetics, of course, secondhand parts are not brand new, not out of the box. So they might have scratches, they might be a little scuffed up, they don't look as pristine as brand new parts. But really, who cares? You're gonna get that part, you're gonna stick it into your computer, you're probably never going to see that part again, or you're only going to see certain angles of that part for the rest of the time that you need to use it. Many PC parts are not visible or are only partially visible. So a few scratches here and there, those don't matter. Is it at a good price? That's what matters. On durability, PC parts are a lot sturdier than we give them credit for. They were designed and built to handle extremes. A good example of that is mining. Back in the day, na uso pa yung GPU mining for cryptocurrency. So those cards would be running 24-7. They would be constantly monitored. And daming mga kinakalikot sa kanila. But I've bought old mining GPUs and they've worked fine for years after, even for gaming. So components are built to be used every day under extreme conditions. Just because matagal na nagamit yung isang part, di naman ibig sabihin bugbug sarado siya. It might mean it's a tough old part that can still keep on kicking for years to come. Of course, you should be more diligent when buying secondhand parts. Test them if you can, do your research if the seller has a good track record. But usually that additional work will pay off because you get excellent components at an excellent price. Up to this point, I've been sharing general tips, but for tip number eight, I'm gonna be super specific. The current meta for case design is airflow. Everyone is obsessed about sucking in more air into the enclosure and making sure that all of your hot parts get the cool air that they deserve. And all of that air sucking is possible thanks to mesh. Basically, the perforated layer found on most cases now where there are lots of tiny holes which allow air to pass through the case. Case manufacturers are tripping over themselves to figure out how to put more mesh anywhere on the case. And so an extreme example would be the APNX C1, which basically has a wraparound mesh design. There's just a very small part of the case on the right side panel that doesn't have mesh, and then everything else has holes. We did test that case and that design, along with maximizing the available fan slots, really does bring a noticeable drop in temperatures for your components. So if you're building a new rig in 2024, you want that rig to look modern. And modern case design now leans heavily in favor of mesh. Or tip 9, screw airflow and get yourself a showcase enclosure. These are the all glass wrap around type of cases. And the more glass you have in a case, the better to see inside, to better appreciate the RGB, the cool looking AIO, the Founders Edition GPU that you have in there. More glass means more visibility, means a more aesthetic build. But glass is not porous, so of course the more glass you have, 
the less mesh you can have or the less interaction you have between the outside air and the inside air of the case. Glass impedes airflow. There's just no way around it. But these are beautiful looking cases from the likes of Lian Li Lee or Height. You can look into the guts and soul of a system because there's so much glass in the enclosure. Yes, airflow could be better and that's the complaint of reviewers and critics. But if you don't mind your components getting a little toasty, and to be fair, components nowadays are used to the heat. They're designed for it. We worry about them too much. So yes, for a lot of these cases, temperatures are a little elevated, but nothing to be concerned about. Plus, you get these really stunning enclosures, which can make a build look unique, which can make a build pop. Part of the fun of building a rig for me is agonizing over what case to get. Kasi para sa akin, yung case talaga yung nagdadala sa rig. It's the component that you see the most often. You form a personal connection with your computer, and most likely you're looking at your computer, and the component that you look at the most is the case. So I take a lot of time deciding on it. But tip number 10 are about parts that you don't really need to agonize over. And for me, that's the PSU and RAM. Yung mahalaga dito, more is not necessarily better. For PSU, you see some people saying that, oh, I'm worried that my PSU won't be enough when I upgrade. So ngayon pa lang, I will be getting 850 watts, 1000 watts. 99% of the time, that's overkill. For many, many rigs, the majority out there, 750 watts is more than enough. My personal rig is only 750 watts. I always try to get 80 plus gold and that's it. In fact, for a lot of builds, even a 650 watt PSU would be just fine. Anything above 750 watts is probably overkill. Depending of course, if you really have bonkers hardware like a 4900K or a 4090. I see a lot of advice online saying that you need to check the collated lists online of so many manufacturers and so many models. To be honest, I find that unnecessarily obsessive about a part that I just don't really want to obsess over. And if you're just starting in the hobby, you don't really need a super high-end PSU for many builds. And that's the same with RAM. For gaming, 16 gigabytes, so two sticks of eight, around 3,600 megahertz, DDR4 of course, that's completely fine already for gaming. 32 gigabytes if you're doing work that requires a lot of RAM, or if you're the type of person that likes having a lot of browser tabs open. But if just for gaming, even for simple work like Word and Excel, 16 gigabytes is more than enough. Again, more isn't necessarily better for what you need it to do. Just like PSU, sometimes people obsess over the CL timings, the faster RAM speeds, but you can keep it simple for RAM. You don't need to go overboard on it. And that flows into tip 11, the best PC is a balanced PC. And when you hear balance, you probably think, don't bottleneck. And that's true. There's a lot of concern among enthusiasts about getting a GPU that's way faster than your CPU. So the overall system is not efficient and the GPU is waiting for instructions from the CPU or vice versa. So there is a bottleneck of performance. I've talked before how I think that might be a little overhyped. I think people tend to focus on that too much. But there are other ways to better balance your computer. For example, if you're just into gaming, you don't need 32 gigabytes of RAM. PSU capacity, anything over 750 watts is probably overkill. If you don't need all of the whiz-bang features of an ATX MOBO, then you can comfortably step down to an MATX MOBO and save yourself some money. So what I mean by balance here is having parts which complement each other. Because you can get too fast and while that might improve system performance slightly, Overall, it's probably a waste of money because it's not an efficient setup. So the golden rule in life, finding the golden mean or the balance, no excess in all things, applies also to PC building. A lot of the builds online now have some kind of LCD panel somewhere. It's gotten to the point where every conceivable surface of a computer, whether it's the AIO CPU block, whether it's the front of a case, everything seems to have some kind of screen now. Yes, it was nice that you could play animated GIFs on the CPU block, you could display basic things, and it felt like a gimmick at the start, to be honest. You had these AIOs, notably first from ASUS, but popularized by NZXT, I think the Kraken series, which had the LCD screen, so you could play animated GIFs there. Beautiful to look at, but really, how useful is it? 
But tip 12 is they're actually useful and I'm a convert now because I upgraded my CPU cooler to the Deepcool AK620 Digital. This is a no mask screen. You can't play videos on it. You can only display basic information like CPU load and CPU temperature. But even the basic things, because it's so easy to look at, you just need to glance at your computer instead of having to pull up the data through some software. It's really intuitive and it's making me bond more with my computer. Mas napapansin ko na ngayon when my computer is becoming hotter. And I think it's when these screens become ubiquitous or more naturally placed around the computer. That's when they can become super useful. Not as a gimmick to display a looping set of videos, but so that at a glance, you can more properly see the basic information of your computer in real time. Speaking of screens, behind me are four monitors. And I started out with a single monitor setup, like a lot of you guys, and then added an extra dual monitor. And it just kind of mushroomed from there. But having at least two monitors is super useful. It makes you a lot more productive. You don't think you need it until you've tried it and then you can't get enough. Now granted, my needs are a little extreme. I'm constantly monitoring communications with the shop, with suppliers, what's happening on YouTube, trying to bang out videos, write scripts. So, so I am doing a lot of work at the same time. And different screens really help with that. I've covered in my other videos how I like to have specific programs already tied into specific monitors so that when I need that information, at a glance, I know where to look. If you're thinking about a dual monitor setup, do it. Easily one of the best upgrades you can do because you're upgrading not really the computer but yourself. You're giving yourself another window into the information stored by your computer. It makes workflow so much faster. Even a very basic example, you're writing an article for work and you need to do research about it. On a single screen, you could have two windows open, the Word document and your web browser, but everything feels cramped. It's uncomfortable to read the web browser. It's uncomfortable to type in Word. With dual monitors, you can have Word open in one monitor and the web browser in the other. Monitors are not the first thing people think about when upgrading or adding to their setup, but you really should. Even in a small desk, you can find a space for a multi-monitor setup. Tip 14 is only pay for things that you really need. And that seems like an obvious thing, but it's not so obvious when it comes to computers because so many features get bundled in. A bit hard to sift through them to make sure that you're only getting what you need and that you're not overpaying. A very simple example is Wi-Fi. I like doing a lot of work on my desktop and I don't like using Wi-Fi for my desktop because a wired LAN cable connection will always still be more reliable. It's the old person in me. I just don't trust wireless networks for performance. And of course, yes, Wi-Fi has gotten a lot better over the years. But you know, why complicate things? Magkatiba naman yung desktop mo, tsaka yung router, just use a LAN cable. So an easy way to save money is to get a motherboard that only has a wired connection, no Wi-Fi. And that can extend to other brands of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi 7 is now the new standard, but you need to have all Wi-Fi 7 devices so you can get the most out of the speed and the reliability increases. What if your old devices are only Wi-Fi 6? Then maybe you can get a cheaper motherboard that only supports up to Wi-Fi 6. Or do you really need a Thunderbolt connection on your motherboard? Now, a lot of content creators, a lot of professionals really look for that Thunderbolt connection. But if you're a gamer, you probably don't care. You don't need that extra feature. You don't need to pay the extra for that feature. Another simple example, RGB. A lot of people like RGB, that's perfectly fine. But if you prefer stealth builds, then why cuff up an extra 500 pesos, couple of thousand pesos, depending on the brand? Why spend more if you're not really interested in lighting? Buy only what you need will surprisingly go a long way in reducing the price of a rig. Tip 15, brands should support you and not the other way around. In the PC space, we're used to thinking in terms of teams. Team Red for AMD, Team Green for Nvidia, Team Blue for Intel. And it's not taken super seriously, it's kind of like half joking. But there are partisans who really get invested, who put their opinion and their self-worth 
into the brand. So if you're an NVIDIA fanboy and you hear people criticizing them for their high prices or making fun of Jensen, and you get super upset when anybody else brings up the other brand. You're tying your self-worth into brands and into products when it should be the other way around. You should choose the product or the brand which is best for you. The brand should be seeking your support, trying to gain your favor instead of you lining up to defend the brand. Now, we do get customers that want an all ROG build, an all Oros build. More power to you guys. You found what you wanted and you're sticking with it. That's fine. But what really puzzles me is when people get upset when they identify with a brand, someone criticizes the brand, and they feel that the criticism is directed not to the brand, but to them. Yun nga, it's the opposite. It shouldn't be like that. And really, what do you care? Yes, you like the brand, but is it really worth it to get into a fight? Why tie your self-worth into your identification with the brand? Brand should work for you, not the other way around. Hardware costs money, but software is free. And tip number 16 is take advantage of the free software that manufacturers are pushing out to make your hardware run faster. And whether that's a new GPU driver, a monitor firmware update, a motherboard BIOS update, manufacturers are constantly issuing out new updates. And sometimes it's kind of annoying to be honest that you frequently have to keep updating. Now you don't need to update every time there's a new thing. Even confining yourself just to major updates of easy to update components like a GPU will significantly enhance the performance of your hardware. And you don't even need to have new hardware because a lot of the updates are for old hardware as well. So this tip is applicable to anyone really who has a computer who's looking for better performance at the low, low price of free. Tip 17 deals with basic maintenance and that is when a computer gets to you, there are a couple of things that you should check and continuously check as you use the computer. One of those is the monitor set a resolution that you like. For a lot of beginners, they're not aware that you can change the resolution being displayed by your monitor. Higher resolutions make everything a little smaller, a little tinier, but on a good monitor, sharpness and clarity are not lost. So you shouldn't be squinting even at higher resolutions. And generally, higher resolutions mean better video playback, crisper text. You generally want the highest resolution that you can get. Refresh rates as well, although this isn't as big a deal for non-gamers. Although back in the day, like really old CRT monitors back in the day, I remember always manually setting to at least 60 hertz, 72 hertz, because anything lower than that would give me eye strain and make me a little nauseous. Most monitors are well beyond that now, even non-gaming monitors. But you should still check anyway. Check your resolution, check your refresh rate, and even check Windows updates. Basic maintenance like that is very easy to do and it will give you an insight into your own computer. The thing with computers is that they often give you a lot of different options to achieve the same thing. For example, you want to upload a file to a website, you can go to the website, tell it where the file is on your local drive, basically using the Windows Explorer interface and then upload the file. Or you can simply drag the file from Explorer into the site UI if the user interface allows it. Two approaches for the same result. An example of that on the hardware side is if you look at your monitor, it probably has multiple ports that are different. Modern monitors usually have both DisplayPort and HDMI. You might even have DVI or even VGA or some other variation on those ports. But all of those are just so that you can hook up the monitor to the computer. And tip 18 is don't be confused by all of those choices. Keep it simple. A lot of the time, one of those choices is superior to everything else and you can just focus on that. Going back to the monitor example, using DisplayPort will get you the highest possible refresh rate at the highest possible resolution that your monitor is capable of. So if you're confused, should I be using HDMI or DisplayPort? Don't need to think about it anymore. Use DisplayPort and that's the best choice among all the options available. Now, don't get me wrong, it's nice to have options because you never know what context the customer is using the hardware in. Perhaps the display port on his GPU is already taken and he can only use an HDMI because the monitor is only being used as a secondary monitor. So options are great, but don't be confused by the options. For many use cases, you can zero in on the best option for you and just forget about the rest.
Tip 19 is super simple and you've heard it from me many times on this channel. Get yourself an SSD. Regardless whether it's an old computer, a new computer, SSDs have really gone down in value. They don't need to be the expensive M.2 types. SATA SSDs are fine. But for any kind of build or upgrade, the OS should be installed on an SSD. They are much faster than the old hard drives. The quality of life improvement just in terms of how fast Windows boots up, is immeasurable. I, I know you can measure it in seconds, but on a psychological level, to have things boot up so quickly because it's running from an SSD just makes things feel a lot smoother. And this is especially true if you're an older person like myself that still has memories of running the OS from a hard drive. Sobrang bagal nun. But nowadays, even with a cheap SATA SSD, the loading times are much faster. If you're not using an SSD as your boot drive or the drive where your OS is installed, definitely get yourself an SSD. It adds so much to your quality of life while using the computer. We often get asked how often should you clean your computer and we're talking about here a physical cleaning. Removing the dirt, the dust, the cobwebs, repasting your CPU cooler, trying to get the gunk out of those corners of the CPU tower or the GPU fans. Especially in our country, tropical, mainit, madume, depending on where you are, magkaka build up talaga yan of dust inside the computer. Tip 20 is no need to go overboard. Generally, a cleaning once every one to two years is fine. Multiple cleanings in one year, I think that's overkill. What you're trying to achieve with a regular cleaning is to improve your thermal performance. So better cooling for your components because either it's radiating heat better and that's what you get when you repaste your CPU cooler as well as removing the dust from it and better thermal performance for other components because you're getting better airflow in your case. That's the practical benefit. On the OC aesthetic side, it's just nice to know that the thing that you're using probably every day is also clean on the inside. Plus, with our service here at Hardware Sugar, we do the cleaning, plus make kasama ng cable management, which we really think we do very well, best in class, yung cleaning and cable management namin. Tip 21 is for tech enthusiasts, and for everyone who is learning about computers on the way, the knowledge that you have is a gift. And the tip is to share it. Don't keep it to yourself. A lot of people find computers confusing. Heck, I find computers very confusing very often. So the knowledge that you have, whether it's troubleshooting Windows, whether it's getting the internet to work again from a router, all of that is useful not just to yourself but to the people around you. If the other tips in this video revolve around yourself, how to get the best rig, how to get the most efficient rig, this tip is directed for you to others. A lot of people can potentially benefit from the knowledge that you have if you've been in the space for a long time. And there's nothing quite like doing it for the first time, especially kung ikaw yung nag-build mismo. Iba yung kaba mo when you do everything and the parts don't want to fit and you watch YouTube and everybody on YouTube ang bilis lang ng build process. Don't compare yourself to what you see on YouTube because everything there is fast cut. Real builds take time, they take sweat, they take effort, they take a lot of WTF moments. Why won't this goddamn GPU fit into my build? And all of the experience that you gained can benefit others. Share what you know guys. Knowledge is meant to be shared, not hoarded selfishly. Tip 22 is you can do it. Don't be afraid to try. Don't be afraid to sort of mess around with the settings of your computer. Even if you're not techy, even though kinakabahan ka, you can do it. And we get a lot of customers that ask us to do things, but the problem is we're not there with them. Ayo nila pumunta sa shop kasi hassle daw to bring their computer. And so we try to talk them through it via chat, but even though we try to give simple instructions, hindi nila magawa, and it's not a lack of technical ability, it's a lack of confidence. Takot lang talaga sila galawin yung computer. One of the very frustrating customer experiences we had last year was we had a gentleman come in, he bought a computer, then he brought it with him back to Mindanao. And actually, simple lang yung problema niya, walang Wi-Fi. We told him to look for the Wi-Fi antennas, hindi daw niya mahanap. And we're pretty sure that when we shipped it out, nandun yung Wi-Fi antennas. We kept telling him, this is what they look like, they're probably inside the motherboard box which looks like this. Wala daw talaga. 
And so we were wondering how do we resolve this problem? And then the next day, sabi niya, ah, oh, nahanap ko na pala. Again, just an inability or a refusal to look for the proper part. Yes, you might not be techie, but everyone has the capacity to do pattern recognition. This is the picture that we sent. You just need to look for it on your end. And that customer was really a headache for us. We've been wanting to do a video about him, but maybe for our next time. But the takeaway from this tip is that don't be afraid. Madali lang ma mental block when you're exposed to something that is new and it's easy to be scared. And if you're still listening all the way up to this tip 22, I hope that you've gotten the confidence from our other videos, from this video, to know that it's okay to be a beginner. And more often than not, you can do it. We all had to start somewhere. It doesn't matter if it takes you a long time to boot up Windows. It doesn't matter if it takes you a long time to learn how to shut down Windows. Kahit mabagal ka sa basics, okay lang yun. Yung mahalaga, iniisip mo na kaya mo yun. Tip 21, don't let people tell you what you want. What do I mean? Yung problema kasi sa mga enthusiasts, palaging may criticism. RGB, baduy. ITX, pangit yung airflow. EIOs, baka magtulo. NVIDIA, overpriced. AMD, pang budget. Any possible combination, any brand, may batikos, may reklamo. Nothing ever makes them happy. Well, I say F them, man. This is gonna be your computer. Ikaw nagbayad. So you should tailor it to how you want the PC to look like, how you want the PC to perform, what looks good to you. At the end of the day, hindi yung critic, hindi yung magaling mong kaibigan na puro reklamo yung gagamit sa computer. Ikaw gagamit. So make it your own. Make choices that appeal to you that make you think, Pucha, ang ganda ng computer ko. Long time viewers may have noticed that I did a similar video at the start of 2023. 23 building tips for 2023. And my last tip for that video was to find a hobby outside of the PC space. Yes, computers are super interesting. It's really fun to be an enthusiast. But I think having outside activities enriches also your experiences in the hobby. And what I personally shared in that 2023 video was that I would try to take up cross-stitching because I ordered a stocking for my son. He's only one year old. And my sort of trying to find a new hobby outside of the PC space was that I would make that stocking, that Christmas stocking from scratch. Fast forward one year and spoiler alert, I did not do that. It turns out that I am a terrible cross-stitcher. Sorry na lang anak, we're gonna have to find some way to get you a Christmas stocking. But I think that advice is still sound. Having hobbies outside of the PC space will ensure that you won't become super obsessive. That's when I start worrying about enthusiasts I talk to na sobra silang nagagalit na one degree performance difference of a CPU cooler, sobra na silang nagagalit. There is a healthy obsession and there are obsessions that are detrimental already to your health because you're not enjoying it anymore. You're not taking pleasure from it, but you become too fixated on these very minor matters that in the greater scheme of things really don't matter. So still the same tip at the end of 2024, Find yourself a hobby outside of the PC space. And my interest now is for 2024, I am going to try to have one meal a week that doesn't have meat in it. Apparently eating meat is really bad for the environment and we're in the age of climate change. And yeah, I just wanna do my small thing. Plus I'm trying to be a bit healthier. I eat a lot of meat. I'm sure I can go one meal without it. Although I already tried it for the first week of January. Nagawa ko naman yung problema, sobrang gutom ko after the meal. But I'll see, hopefully I can stick with it for the rest of the 51 weeks in 2024. So that's my New Year's resolution slash last advice for builders this year. The PC hobby is great, but there are also other interests that are just as great. Thank you for watching. I hope and I'm sure 2024 will be awesome. Let's experience it together. Paminsan may nagtatanong kung may kilala ba kaming computer shop na trusted yung hindi ka lolokohin. Actually meron kami. Full service PC store ang Hardware Sugar. Nagbabenta kami ng PC components. Nagbabenta rin kami ng fully assembled rigs. We clean computers. Kasama na rin yung excellent cable management namin and CPU cooler repasting sa cleaning. We also clean and repaste GPUs. Nasa Makati yung physical store namin and you can also buy from our site. 
www.hwsugar.ph na 100% palaging up-to-date yung inventory dun. Kung in-stock yung item sa amin, available yun sa site. We also ship nationwide. Thanks for watching and maybe one of these days, magkita tayo sa shop.